Good morning, everybody, and thank you for tuning in this lovely Saturday morning. I really hope you're having a wonderful weekend so far with the Battlefield Beta. And I really do hope that you guys are getting a good feel for it. If you aren't, I really hope, ladies and gentlemen, that you give this game a good try. And definitely, definitely give EA your feedback, especially on their forums. They're going to need it with this game being one of the most anticipated and biggest budget games of the year to release. Now, because of this, I do want to talk a little bit about what I mentioned earlier, especially in the first video, which was the ever-evolving maps. As you've already seen, I know you've seen this video a hundred times already if you've been watching. I know you're expecting some different gameplay footage, which I promise is on the way, because I will have to get some new footage for the vehicles, because we are going to be doing a comparison between all of them that we can. The horse, the buggies, the mounted weapons, airplanes. Airplanes specifically are going to be getting a lot of focus. The class changes aren't going to get so much since there isn't just a whole lot that is really all that noticeable. But another thing we will be taking a look at is pacing and map size. Especially for game modes like Conquest that are of fairly good size portions. Now, what I want to talk about is how the maps are always offering a new form of combat. Because of this, we're going to be using two maps out of Battlefield 4, which I think are best represented for this, which are Flood Zone and Parcel Storm. Parcel Storm, because it reminds me a lot of what happens in Sinai Desert, where you see the Sand Storms move in and make it really difficult to battle. Now, because of this, I did grab some footage here where I'm playing in the Jets, which I know I will be using in the footage for today's video that's coming later in which is going to discuss about the attention to detail on how maps evolve just like in the sandstorm parcel storms storm that moves in does change visibility limits but not nearly as bad as what Sinai Deserts does which is blinding you can't see enough to even run you have to be beyond careful now I did notice a little bit of difference in Parcel Storm, I did notice it was a little harder to see further out with the jet. I'm pretty sure on land that could be a bigger deal, especially because you're having to deal with a torrential downpour, whereas a jet, you're moving pretty quickly and you're pretty elevated compared to everybody else. Now, does that actually play a role to the perspective combat? Not really, but it offers enough to give that feel of desperation when you can't figure out where you're getting shot from, especially since visibility and lighting has decayed a decent enough amount to make players concerned about their own safety. Now, one map that does offer another big look at this is how maps change is the Shanghai Tower. Um, I'm definitely going to actually use that because it does completely change the atmosphere, which I really appreciate it. It was a great sense of detail, and I'm sure when the map of the Zeppelin comes out this fall on October 21st, I'm going to be astonished because I will be playing this on October 19th while some people are going to be waiting an extra day or two. Now what I'm talking about with weather conditions and the evolved form of each map, I'm talking about the atmosphere as a whole. Sinai Desert displaces perfectly, especially with cloud coverage and the ever growing feel that you're in a real life zone. You're seeing clouds move across, you're seeing the sun move away here and there. You get fog occasionally, which I will add in in a future video, especially if it happens again. Because it, to me that is important, it does offer a sense of vulnerability. Now, just as you saw earlier, the sandstorm is moving in. You can see my visibility has been decaying a little by little. And that is going to be causing a problem later in, especially when I feel combat is going to be of an importance. Now one thing I would like to see, and the reason I replay this video clip is, I would like to say one thing that would be nice, and Flood Zone offers a great display of this, is how maps can change and evolve combat. In Flood Zone, for those of you who have not played it, Flood Zone is a map that starts out as a ground level in the streets, it's just been raining a little bit, so there's not a whole lot of flooding. As each match goes on, somewhere about halfway, maybe a little further out, the map begins to flood. The dams break. The map goes from a 
ground level, maybe knee high water, to above head depths so that you're having to swim. The weapons go from your typical four wheelers, trucks, LAVs, and helicopters to you're actually seeing combat boats, you're seeing dinghies with assault guns on them, so the heavy machine guns. You're also seeing jet skis. Just because it fits the reality of what would happen if a war zone flooded. And unfortunately, for both teams, that means it's going to become more difficult and the entire fight goes to a rooftop level and a high ground level. So it leaves a lot more constrictive use of the entire map and will require players to be rather creative in their essence of combat flow and ebb. Now, with Sinai Desert, that is the same thing that we're going to be dealing with, especially when the Zeppelin map launches. We're going to see another form of we are going to have to work a lot harder to learn the maps. They will be changing, they will be adding new and taking away old features that we were used to. So it's going to be a constant flow of learning curves. Now that's not a bad thing, especially if you consider how big these maps are and how static they could be. And the fact that they want to break the monotonous tone by doing that. Which is something DICE has done great, even in this open beta. And they've done before. They showed that with Battlefront. Unfortunately, on maps like Hoth, we didn't get to see blinding blizzards, that kind of thing. Tauntauns running across the map. We didn't see just a whole lot of that. So, it's definitely nice to see that they are learning to evolve. They're continuing to do so. And unfortunately, it's something that Call of Duty could take notes from. And I really hope Infinite Warfare realizes that's what's going to make this game successful. If you see, just like right here in Shanghai, this is going to be kind of like what the Zeppelin is going to do in that map. We're going to see things constantly change, and that's something that's not going to happen in Call of Duty. Now, what will Battlefield bring to the table? I really don't know. I do hope maps in the final release do evolve over time. I would like to see things like this, where you're seeing a lot of debris, you're seeing fog of war because of the building coming down, so the skyscraper has changed the battlefield. It's made visibility limited. It has added more paper, debris, stuff like that to the area. So players are definitely having a lot more immersion than they had previously. Now is this going to be an every time thing every time you go to that map? No. Now Sinai Desert has changed every time I've played. I've not always gotten a sandstorm. I've actually gotten a fog a few times where I couldn't see. And I do hope that actually happens for the airplane video or one of the vehicles because I would like to show you how visibility changes, how you have to be more creative, and you're definitely going to have to rely on your team to pinpoint what they need you to attack from the air because that will be a major pivotal role just as it was in Battlefield 4. It was that way in Hardline and it was even that way in Star Wars Battlefront where you depended on your team to communicate and give you targets to shoot. Now. That is true even for the ground level. As you can see here, visibility is extremely limited. It's nothing near like what Flood Zone had. It's nothing near what Dawnbreaker had. Shanghai didn't offer it and neither does Parcel Storm. This is a whole new attention to detail that you're going to have to have. But ladies and gentlemen, because that is all the time I have in this video, I do want to thank all of you for tuning in. It has been an amazing day so far. We do have two videos coming up. One it will be the airplanes, one will be other vehicles, and one's just going to be general tips and tricks on how to play Battlefield 1 to the best, especially if you're new to the franchise. If you have not downloaded the beta, it is currently available for PlayStation 4 via the PlayStation Store on Xbox One, the all-in-one entertainment system on the Xbox Live Marketplace and PC, you can download it right now on Origin. If you are playing it, let us know what you think in the comments. We will be streaming it on Twitch. You can find me at twitch.tv slash monkeygames. It will be down in the more information. I hope, ladies and gentlemen, I see you on the battlefield. If you see me, please give me a shout out. I would love to hear from you. And I would even like to team up with some of you viewers. Thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and stay tuned for more.